Good morning, afternoon, or good evening, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and to everybody else that is watching. On this channel, we are going to be looking at the differences between Christianity and Islam, between Christianity and atheism, and between Christianity and other faiths. Yes, atheism is a faith-based item, and so it will, and so it will be then treated like a religion. But to be fair, we will also be looking at other at other denominations within the Christian umbrella. For example, the Seventh-day Adventist would be a good church to go to if they would do two things. If they would get rid of Ellen G. White, and if they would come to a proper understanding of what the Sabbath is. See, they believe that the Sabbath is the only day that we can congregate to worship. That is not what the Bible says. Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11 says Sabbath is the day of rest, not the day to congregate and worship. I will talk about that in more, in a little more actual detail a little bit later. But that is the, but see, they are also that of a, a Christian group, and I will not pick on any Christian denomination unless if I have biblical proof to show that they are doing wrong. I will also pick on the black Hebrew Israelites because the only leg that they have, if it is destroyed, they do not have a separate group anymore. And I will show you again in, a, in that of a later it is a, a, a lesser video how that is about to be destroyed. They only have one leg. Without that leg, they have got nothing to stand on. So no one is immune from being looked at. To then prove it to you, I go to I attend the Church of Christ, and I am a ordained preacher of the Church of Christ. But one big doctrinal error that the Church of Christ has <coughs> is that we sing a cappella. Okay, there is nothing wrong with singing a cappella, and there is nothing wrong with singing with, with instruments. And in my own point of view, as long as the instruments does not overpower the singing. Okay, why do I say that? For a couple of things. There was, there was instruments at the temple. Plural. In, plurally instruments at the temple, and Jesus did not speak against the instruments in any of the Gospels. There is going to be instruments in heaven. You can see that in the book of Revelation. The reason why the Church of Christ chooses no chooses not to have a, a 
instruments is because a couple of verses within the Pauline letters says, sing with your voice. And I am just super, super, um, super, it is, uh, well, 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 let's just see, amplifying that right now. I will also be making that of a video on that. But, are, but, is the Christ, is the Church of Christ wrong for singing a cappella? No, because there are verses in both Old and New that actually supports a cappella singing. There is also scriptures in both Old and New that also supports it that also supports instruments. This is just a preference. This should not be a deciding factor whether or not to judge any of the other denominations to be true or false because all of the others that I know of Scenes with, scenes with instruments, and that's not what I read in the King James Bible. Both sides are supported, so that should not be an issue. In this page, we are looking at the truth verses. And that can be anything. We are going to be looking at science, at which science, the word science itself just means knowledge. The scientific process is that of observable, uh, observable testable, and repeatable. Okay, if one of those legs does not work, then there is something wrong with the theory, with the, the, with the, the theology, or with the hypothesis. Okay, that is why the Big Bang Theory and the theory of evolution are still just theories because it is not testable and it is not repeatable and in and for sure within the case of the theory of evolution it's not observable either you can't find it in archaeology but we will be touching on that in more detail in probably several later videos. We will also be looking at history. We will be looking at archaeology. Again, we will be, since we here at this group is that of Christians, we also will be taking a look at what the Bible says sometimes. Most of the time, some of these, some of these are of religions, and some of these are theories hang themselves. So that's why I said we'll be sometimes looking at the Bible. Now, I know that there's probably a couple of Muslims watching this, and you see what happened to the Quran. And you can thank your scholars for finally admitting uh, the truth, that there are holes in the narrative. Dr. Yasser Qadi. What does that mean? Well, we will be looking a little more 
into that later on. In, in other videos. Now, for the YouTube censors, Islam is not the only re religion we refute, but is the main one. This is satire, and if you don't know what satire is, look it up. Or, this is likely 90% educational, showing you the facts and letting you decide yourself. Okay. We will quote directly from the Quran, and we will try to keep with only that of the Sahih quotes from the other holy books of Islam. Sahih means authentic, and if you deny Sahih, well, then congratulations. You are no longer a Muslim. Okay. We question the holy books and do not attack the person until they attack us first. And even then, it may take a few before we finally reply back. If you think that you can get away with attacking and not having any of the repercussions because of your attacks, you have come to the wrong page. And I am only talking about with other videos. We do not condone violence. Do not. So, let's keep it civilized. This is not hate speech. Do not think for once that this is hate speech. If it was hate speech, then we would not try to teach you the truth. We would just let you believe the lies. But we are teaching you the truth, and then we call you to come to the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. All right. Again, not only Islam, but also to include, but not limited to the Catholic Church, that of the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Atheism, or other translations of the Quran or of the Bible. Okay, we here believe that the Textus Receptus is the Textus Receptus and also that of the uh, Masoretic text, that being of the Old Testament, Textus, Textus Receptus is the new, is, is the new Testament. These are the original, okay? And any Bible that, that it honestly translates from these two groups of scrolls is a good Bible to read. And among them, the biggest selling Bible among that group is the King James Translation. Most of the other translations, and I will get into this a little bit later, 
is translated either from the Codex Alexandria or one of its daughters. Now, what do I mean by one of its uh, daughters? The Westcott and Hort, the Latin Vulgate, are but are two of the examples of ones that came from the Codex Alexandria. So, we are not just picking on Islam. If it goes against God's word, we will prove it. Otherwise, we don't pick on any other Christian religion and if your theology like atheism or Islam goes against what we believe we will be looking into you so it's not just Islam once you start believing in something which is not yet a reality for you, you're bound to be in conflict with somebody else because somebody else is bound to believe something else. That is what this guy says and how true that is. Religious theologies has been a, a battle against each other from way back when. So, don't think that it is only Islam against Christians, it is Islam against every other religion there is. And while we don't, we as Christians don't make it as much of a big deal about it, it's also us against the rest of the religions, which, like I said, includes atheism. Atheism is a religion. You have to believe it because there is no evidence for it. We are not robots. Which tells us at least one thing about what and about whatever or whoever created us. We have freedom of choice. If it wasn't for freedom of choice, we all would be of the same religion because we would have no choice. Chapter 9 of the Quran tells us to convert or die. This goes against the freedom of choice. Chapter 9, verse, I think it's 5. Chapter 9, verse 29, and chapter 9, verse 111, just to name three of them. I do know verses 29 and verses 111 for sure, but I'm almost certain it is also verse 5. And if you don't know... And if you don't know, a bit of side note here, if you don't know how, how the Quran is organized, it is not organized in a particular sequential order, but rather from longest chapter to the shortest chapter. So, you would have to look it up to see what chapter was written when 
And when you do that, you find out that you find out that Muhammad was writing chapter 111 when he died. It is incomplete. At which I have a couple of problems with chapter 111, but that will be in another separate video. But chapter 9 is the last fully completed chapter before he died. So, that is why I chose chapter 9, because it's the last full chapter that Muhammad have then either wrote himself or he have then basically dictated. Some of the scholars is unsure of which one it was, and we may get into that as well. Again, this is education and satire. If you cannot stand for your religion to be criticized, or that you cannot stand to be taught that your religion is false, then this is the wrong channel for you. Go somewhere else. But we here intend on keeping with the truth, keeping with what is written. And we will show how Islam collapses in on itself. In the set of the video, what is wrong with Islam today? That of a Muslim apologist said, when you get angry, get physical and emotional, you have something to hide. This is a Muslim apologist. He, he also says, if we are suppressing each other's expression, then we are the first people to be stereotyping ourselves. Diversity begins at home. Hmm, very interesting. If we are going to be ultra-defensive about critical thinking in our faith, then the message that we convey to the very people whom you say is Islamophobe is that we have something to hide. And that is why we get angry, and that is why we hurt. This is a fatwas at one, not hurt, but hurl of the fatwas at one another. And that is why emotional about our uh, arguments. Okay, this is on this very video. Honest conversation is important and is needed everywhere. And I am, and I am putting the timestamps so that you can look it up yourself. You do not have to believe me, but I put the name of the video and at what timestamps. He also spoke against the preservation of the Quran. Wait a minute. Don't you say that there has only been one Quran? Well, that will be debunked too. But he also said that. But, okay. And I hope 
then I spelled his name right. And yes, in that of the Shahada, it does say only one Quran, but yet he just said that there isn't. Interesting. The test. The Bible has gone through a lot of work to then prove its truth. Historical criticism, biblical criticism, source of, source of criticism, and doesn't look like that word is spelled right, so let's spell it right. Uh, redactive criticism, source, uh, artifacts, in other words, archaeology, and many other academic attacks, and guess what? It has survived. But the Quran has not been through any of these by the Islamic academia. It is the Christian academia that is doing all of this work. And guess what? It is falling apart because it cannot stand any test. There is no historical facts about Muhammad or a lot of what he said until 200 years after the alleged Muhammad's death. And I put in there alleged because we are not so sure that he even existed, especially since it's 200 years. See, that is one thing about the historical fact-checking. We, as the Christian, as the Christian community, has scrolls now that dates back to the first century. We also have historical facts that a man truly by the name of Jesus did exist, that he died on the cross and he rose. Historical facts outside of the Bible. Okay. How can we believe in a book if you are trying to hide stuff? Consider this. Why is there no archaeological digs being approved near where the Kaaba is. Because if the archaeologists dug, they would not find any evidence. And they know it. That is lack of artifacts. Let's get a few things clear. This YouTube channel is brand new as, as of August 2021. Therefore, you Muslims can't go crying to YouTube to then try to get us denominated, <laughs> de, oh, excuse me, demonetized. 
Yes, my cousin and I are doing this in partnership with others. It takes several years and a lot of views to become now monetized. Muslims tried to do that to Dr. David Wood, Dr. Al Fadi, the Apostate Prophet, Christian Prince, Rob uh, uh, RC, okay, and others. And yet, we still persist. And yes, I have learned a lot from all of these people along with Hatu Tosh, at which at which my video too will be about what happened on July 25th. That is absolutely ridiculous of what happened and it should have never happened. But that will be in another video. When, but, when will you get it? It is not about the money as much as it is about the truth. Yes, I would enjoy to have this channel monetized right away. And so I will be setting up PayPal uh, a Patreon and a few others so that if you want to help me with creating these truth-seeking videos then I would very much appreciate it I am currently going to school to get a second master's degree, and I am about nine months away from getting my second master's. I do have a master's in, in that of Bible theology, and this other master's I'm working on now is in counseling. We are not attacking the person, but we are bringing into question the Quran, the hit, that of the Hadiths, Allah, and also Muhammad. When one leg of this table falls, the whole system fails. And when it does, we Christians need to have created a good enough of a trust and honesty that they will come to us for more information on becoming saved through our Lord Yeshua. Dr. J. Smith says that we have to take a look at the book and the man. Well, the book and the man for Islam is the Quran and it is Muhammad. For that of our, for, for that of us uh, uh, Christians, it is Jesus Christ and the New Testament. For the Jews, it is the Old Testament. So, let's not get that part of it confused. But, within that, I then dare to add, and the God, at which God is only a title. 
the biggest problem I have with a lot of these translations is the overabundant use of the term God. Okay, what God? Like as in uh, Genesis 1, 1 says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. But if we look at the Hebrew, it says, In the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The term Ohim is triune, three working as one. That would then make it like a family. That is, that is about the best way that I can do a quick, a, a, to do that of a quick a, a explanation on it. I don't know if I'm going to do that of a full uh, video on that yet, but right there in verse 1, it talks about the triune God of the Bible, Elohim. In John 1.1, 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, instead, that should be, In the beginning was the Logos. And the Logos was with El well, was with Theos. Theos being that of the Father, okay? Theos. And the Logos was God. Okay? Logos being the Son, Theos being the Father. But if, in like, as it states in John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Okay, there are two key words, only and begotten. Now, God did also call uh, Israel as his Son. He have called others as his Son. But it's not the begotten son. There is a difference between being a son and being a begotten son because being a, because being a non-begotten son means that you are adopted. Okay, that you were adopted. So, in the New Testament, Logos being the Son, Jesus Christ, and Theos being the Father. So, within that of Christianity, we need to take a look at the new, need to take a look at the new, new Testament, Jesus Christ, and also Theos, which is the Father. That is why I add, and the God, to the what, um, Dr. J. Smith. Uh, and I don't have his name on here. I am needing to add. Okay. There. That is what that is what a, a Dr. J. Smith says that we are needing to take a look at the book and the man, but I dare to add and the God. Okay, because within Islam, the book is the Quran, the man is, of course, Muhammad, and the God is, well, translated into English is the God, or God. 
Now then, what was it that I said just a couple of minutes ago? That God is only a title? Well, Allah, translated into English, can be either God or the God. That means that Allah doesn't know what his name is. That is a very interesting issue that you have. If your own God doesn't know his name, then how do you know that you are worshiping the correct God? Because if you remember during the time of the Exodus, there were ten plagues. Well, Elohim, or even more than likely, Yahweh, challenged all, well, ten of the main gods Egypt had. That of the plague of the locusts, challenged the god of crops. The plague of the Nile River turning into blood challenged the god of the water. And every one of the plagues challenged a specific god. And every one and all ten of those gods failed because they could not stop Yahweh. So, anything and anyone can be a god. Your god just has to be more specific at what god he is. We do not respond verbally to the person with three conditions, unless if you attack us as a person first, and even then it may take a few attacks before we do respond back, or if they are a Islamic a apologist and we see something they are saying that does not align with the Quran or Hadith. Okay, we are to bring to question Muhammad, Allah, Quran, and the Hadith. Does it make sense as compared to real science? We are even occasionally going to compare a statement in the Hadith or Quran with the Bible or real science so to see if it is accurate. We do not group all Muslims into one pool. There are some, there are truly some that seek the truth and are the peaceful kind. But we actually rather we look to see what the holy books of Islam say. In other words, we critique the ideology. If you state in a comment in one of these videos that let's, and I am about to get, well, let me just get to that slide here in, in, in a little bit. Not all Muslims are the, the T, and if I say that word, then this, then this video will be banned and be taken down by YouTube. So I'm just going to let you imagine what that T is. 
it is that that sensitive that YouTube will take the video down if it is mentioned. So I'm not going to mention it. Because really only about, what, less than 2% are, so there are passive and active Muslims as well as Christians. And so we know this. We know this. But as Dr. J. Smith said, and this is something that I have just said, that we need to measure by the book and the man, and I dare to add, and the God. Okay, what does your God say? Does it even make sense? We are about to find out, though. Freedom of speech. You don't like us insulting your a uh, prophet, God, and the Quran? Well, too bad. We do not like what your Quran says about us. Quran verses 98, verse 6, 62, verse 5, and 9, verse 28, 2, verse 32, just to name a few. Anyone who is not a, a Muslim is the worst of creature. But yet... According to the Quran, he created us. So he is calling his own creatures the worst of creatures. Interesting. But we say Quran verses, like for example, 109 verse 6, You have your religion and I have mine. It is my duty to try to win you to Jesus Christ. It is your job to try to win me over to a, a Islam. And that's only fair. That is only fair. And that is what this channel ultimately will do, is try to get you converted to being a Christian. And, and to let me add that... Okay, there. That is our ultimate goal, is to convert as many people as we can to Christianity. And, and you have that same duty. All right. But again, if you don't like that of the freedom of speech, too bad. We do not like what your we do not like what your Ayaga Quran says about us. Again, like I went through these. So if you do not like freedom of speech, please go somewhere else. When violent things, or thugs, sorry, when violent thugs tell us we cannot do something, then we have to do it, or we are submitting to their intimidation. Robert Spencer said that. I don't think I have his name. Where? Yeah. Okay. 
And just to let you know, well, this has to go down. Yeah. And just to let you know, I have learned a lot from all these that is mentioned right here. And let me rest assure you, let me rest assure you that everything that they've said, I have looked up. I am what I am that of the one percent as what that of that of Dr. David would have been actually explained. Let's just think of 100 pe people being in a room and then there is somebody talking to them. Well, 99 of those 100 will just believe what that speaker says without looking it up. But there is that 1% and I hope eventually it will go higher. But he says 1% or one person out of every 100 will actually look it up. I am one of those 1%. If you try to tell me something opposite of what I have proven in any video, you better have evidence. Prove it, and I will get to that here soon. But going back to what RS said, America does not submit. In America, freedom of speech has a very long line of acceptance. People can burn the American flag. That falls under the freedom of speech. That happened in 1960s. Something else that happened in 1960s, girls didn't want to wear bras. And so they have took off the bras, and they burned the bras. Again, that's freedom of speech. They did not go to jail because they burned the flag or they burned the bras. They went to jail for other criminal activities that happened afterwards. Okay if they went to jail, but if it was a peaceful protest, and uh, that is the key, peaceful, oh, excuse me, protest, <coughs> no one went to jail. We can tell the President of the United States to go to uh, that place or to blank off, or to tell the cops the same thing as long as we do not threaten with physical harm, and that is the line. We on this channel will not cross that line. We will not threaten you with any physical harm, and we expect the same from you although that's likely not going to happen. But we expect the same from you. People burned the Bibles. And since that can happen here in America, we can also burn the Quran if we choose. We can mock other religions, and Islam is no exception. I don't shift through the small gears, especially when I am bobtail. A person that has, that has or is currently driving a big rig truck knows what this is talking about. I go from first to fifth gear really fast, 
So keep the chats civilized. No threats, for you will not like the results. And if you think what AP and uh, and also what uh, it is, oh, 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 David Wood did was bad, you are definitely not going to like what I have plans on doing. So, don't push the buttons. Don't push the buttons. Okay, here is a verse from the Quran. It is basically talking about do you know, let's see if I can make this any bigger. Maybe not. Well that drops one off. Sixteen point five maybe. Just barely a little bit bigger. Do not insult what they evoke besides Allah, or they will insult Allah. Okay, see, I did not start the invoking. Whenever you invoke against my God, I have to respond. And that is what you have been doing, is that Islam for one thing says the Bible has been corrupted. That we serve a false god, that all kinds of things. You are invoking us to reply. And that is what we are doing. We are invoking. We we are being invoked and so therefore we are replying. And here is some more uh, translations just in case if you didn't like the first uh, well, what is it one two three four five six translations here is one two three four more translations that is saying the exact same thing and you have a problem with us having more than one translation here is ten right here and that's not all of them. The count is now up over 32 now. What is that? Okay. Are we Islamic phobic? That of a ophobe means the fear of. And if we were afraid of the death threats, we would not be doing this now, then would we? Because we already know that some of the Muslims, I'm not saying all will, but some Muslims will give us some death threats. Instead, we seek the truth wherever it is. Come to find out the truth is not Islam. We are not Islamophobe. We are calling out the errors in your Quran and Hadith and then call you to be a Christian. Now the question is, are you then that of Christophobe, a scienceophobe, a, a, that of a, a historophobe, a, a Archaeological phobe, a Hindu phobe, Krishna phobe, or 
or in any other time type of aphobe. Maybe that of the one true aphobe that you truly are is truth aphobe. You are afraid of the truth. And that is sad. That truly is sad that you are afraid of the truth. Think about that for a while. That if you are getting mad at us for telling you the truth, why are you getting mad at us when you should be getting mad at the people that has been telling you lies all this time? I would be getting mad at the people who has been lying at, lying to me. Not against the one that have told you the truth finally. But no, many of the Muslims that I have observed, now I'm not saying all of them, but quite a few that I have observed and that I have talked to because I am a member of four Islam versus a Christianity Facebook pages. On three of those four, I am an admin. And I have talked a lot with a lot of Muslims. And they always seem to get mad at me for pointing out the truth. Not, well, I shouldn't say always, but there was a few that have thanked me, but that's but that is very few. A lot of them have got mad because I pointed out the truth. What is the deal, yo? What is the deal? In a recent college class for counseling, it was discussed that a subjective frame of reference, that is, subject of psychological study, perceives and also a, a, a experiences or understandings of him or herself. This can be done through assimilation, social interest, a, a holistic approach. Freud viewed people as being fixed by their early experiences, whereas Adler believed people could change through social learning. The question is, which school of thought are you? Are you a Freudian school of thought, or are you that of a, a Adler school of thought? I am more of a Adler school of thought, that people can change through social learning. And I hope you take these videos in the intent that they are a learning experience. Learn from it. Look it up yourself. Do not just believe me. Look it up yourself because I am going to give references. A Muslim counselor, again, in that same class. The, that of the instructor asked, if a Christian went to a, a Muslim counselor seeking for some spiritual help or else guidance. And I chimed in and said, you likely won't find any Muslim counselors 
and even if you did, that of the number one rule for that of a Muslim is to convert people to Islam. And one of the other students got mad and said, I should, that I am, that I have got no idea what I am talking about. And yes, I do, because I have been dealing with a lot of Muslims for the last almost four years. I know what I'm talking about later in that class. That teacher have said the same thing I just said. And I think that have got her mad because I knew what I was talking about and he knew that I knew. And so does a couple of the other students that comes from Africa that is torn apart by Islam. They also said that I know what I'm talking about. People that have experienced Islam, even a whole lot closer to first hand than what I have, and I only deal with them online. They have dealt with, with them in person. But again, like I said, not all of not all of them are that way. Jews, Christians, and also Muslims believe in the Adam and Eve. So that technically makes us all brothers and sisters. Consider that. Because if we all believe in Adam and Eve, we all came from Adam and Eve. And even that of the religion of atheism believes that there was a first man and a first woman. So, whether or not if at all atheism calls them Adam and Eve, they still believe in a first man and a first woman. So, even through the religion of atheism, we are still brothers and sisters. If Allah wanted to force us to worship him only, or even Elohim, or any god that have created us, why did he not make us like robots, and I should say like robots, and pre-program us to do so if we didn't have a choice? Why are we not pre-programmed to do so? We are, we as humans are pre-programmed to do other things. To be able to walk on our feet, not on all fours. To eat, to think, to do, to do a whole lot of things that we are pre-programmed to do. So why didn't the Creator not pre-program us to worship Him and Him alone? That's because if you are forced to worship, that is not a freely love given. Are you catching this? That if you are forced, it's not a free love that is given of your own choice. You are forced to. Instead, Elohim gave us the freedom to choose to then either worship Him and love Him for a truth, for that of true love is not forced but is offered freely. And anyone that chooses not to worship Elohim 
does so by choice. We as we as the Christians does not does not dish out that of a death sentence because you choose not to. Uh, now let me restate that we as Protestant Christians does not kill you because you don't want to worship Elohim. The Catholic Church did. Okay. The Catholic Church and that of the Protestant Church are not the same thing. So don't try to leave a comment that, yes, that of the Church did. Well, yeah, the Catholic Church did. And that is one of many things that we will be talking about in later videos of the Catholic Church. But we, as a Protestant Church, does not kill you because you don't want to worship Elohim. That of the Catholic Church is, in, is not doing it right now. But if you believe in the prophecy in the book of Revelation and then understand it the way it should be understood, the Catholic Church will be doing it again soon. So be prepared. And I am sorry for for all of the members that, or for all of the people watching this that is Catholic, but if you will watch those other videos that I will be posting, either by me or as my cousin or as a friend, we will show you how that is, and I hope you understand. We do it in love that we want you to come to the truth. And if the truth is not found in the Catholic Church, please get out. But let us prove it. Do not, do not all of a sudden turn us off, okay? Learn with what we are saying and do the research yourself. Be that 1%. Hopefully it will become 2%, then 3%, then 4%. I hope to invoke you to do the research. I will be posting everything I say so you can do the research, and if you want to, you can dig even deeper. Because I can talk for hours proving about the Catholic Church, and not F-O-U-R, but F-O-R, for hours, talking about how the Catholic Church goes against the Bible. And, uh, and that is going to be key. I will have proof. Okay, stop right there. I know that just a few slides back, you've seen 10 translations of one verse. There's four there's six, ten translations of the same verse. So, if you do not like the English translation, you have a problem with the translator, not us. But that doesn't matter anyway, now then, does it? At least three native tongue ex-Muslims that I know of many thousands of, of others that I do not know of, 
do confirm the typical translation. And that is why we try to show more than one translation of a, of a verse we get from the Quran. Okay. That's why we try to show more than one translation. So, don't get mad at us because you don't like the English translation. Get mad at the translator if you don't like it. The one who is making the claim bears the burden of proof. The Islamic claims says that the Bible was corrupted, but I will show you verses in your own Quran in a later video. That, well, it confirms the preservation of the Bible. So how can it be corrupted? That Islam claims that there's no errors in the Quran, and we will be addressing this too in later videos. And that there's only one Quran. But wait a minute. Didn't we just see 10 right here? Uh huh. I wonder where they get only one Quran. We are going to be debunking that as well in one of the later videos. In context. One of my current instructors doesn't like it when I use the term in context, but one of the textbook, well at, well, at least one of them, I do know at least three for sure, is always telling us to keep things in context from about what the client is telling us as a as that of a counselor to keep things in context. Well this context idea goes with the Bible and with the Quran. We will work diligently to try to keep things in context. Like for example, if you just read Luke 19, verse 27, but though added, 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 which this is one of the verses that a lot of Muslims try to use to show that even Jesus promotes killing the, un, killing the unbelievers. But there's a problem. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. There is a problem. This is taken out of context. Yes, Jesus did say it, but it's a parable. It's a parable. You do not consider a parable as factual. There are hidden messages and meanings. You can read the whole parable, Luke 19, 11 through 27. See, verse 27 is at the end of the parable. It's at the end. So you can read the whole parable. And again, it's a parable. So, uh, parable. And let me make that all caps.
And so we will be working diligently to try to keep things in context. Here we go with another several translations. Just in case if somebody wants to say that I do not have the proper education, blah, blah, blah. For one thing, I did say that I do have a master's degree in Bible theology. One of the classes was looking into other religions. At least one, I think it was two. For sure one, and I wrote an essay about Islam. And I was told, as a side note from the instructor, that was the best essay he has read on Islam. Not one of the best, uh, the best. So, it is apparently that I know something about Islam. After all, I have been dealing with Muslims on Facebook for a little over four years now, and I have just decided to start a YouTube channel. Maybe the more you hear something, and that is how we were created, that we have to do something over and over and over again before we learn it. Like, for example, when we learned how to walk, we didn't just learn on the, on the first try. It took us several times of falling on our behinds. And weeks before we finally learned how to walk. And this goes with practically anything. We have to practice things over and over. And that is why in math you are practically doing the same thing over and over so that you can get it through repetition. So, here is three of the translations that says, and we have made indeed, and we have indeed made the Quran easy to understand and remember. Easy to understand. Easy to learn. Easy to understand. Okay, these are the verses of the clear book. <coughs> this one says clear. Uh, of the clear book. The book that clearly uh, expounds the truth. Okay, clear, 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 clear. Okay, these are two actual different verses, but you get the idea. I could have listed a whole lot more than just three. That says easy. Just like I did way back here, I have listed ten. And I could have listed ten for 54 verse 7 and ten for 12 verses 1 and 2. But since the Quran proclaims that it is supposed to be clear and easy to understand, it, it is telling me that you don't need a college degree. The, the very first Muslims did not have a college degree. And yet they were supposed to understand it clearly so then do not try to be telling us that we have no idea what we are talking about 
that just means that you are going against your own Quran because it says it is supposed to be clear and easy to understand. And so if it isn't clear and easy, well then, congratulations, you are no longer a Muslim. Let me introduce you to Jesus, the one true salvation we have. The rules will not change to meet your twisted doctrine. In other words, if you use a rule to benefit your thought, the rule does not change when it works against you. One of the often proclaimed is abrogation. Well, that verse was abrogated. But yet I cannot do the same thing? No, no, no. If you can use, use that abrogation, so can I. The straw man. That does not misrepresent the opponent's POV. That is why I will be using scripture. And that of primarily Sahih Hadiths because the non sahi can be argued, well, that is not a true hadith. It is one of those bad or one of those fabricated ones because it is not sahi. That is why we try to keep with the sahi, because if you deny sahi, Again, congratulations, you are not a Muslim anymore. The good old ad hominem. Attacking the person and not the subject at hand. This really only goes to show that you have nothing left except to attack the person. You have lost and you don't see a way out. But instead of coming on over to being a Christian, you then try to attack the person. Well, that won't work here. A red herring. Changing the topic. That is something that we will work towards not letting happen. Because generally when you change the topic, you are trying to hide something. So what is it that you are trying to hide? Let me understand that. And do not be a hypocrite. Do not be a hypocrite. Telling me that this is not Christ-like to the do what Dr. David Wood does, Al Fadi, AP, CP, RC, and, and all of the others like us, to then do this, well, then you haven't read the Bible. In at, in at least two places, Jesus calls that it of the Pharisees, ye brood of vipers.
and he went on the polemic or on the attack on the offense however you want to say it but he went on the offense several times and more than half the time he was not quite so polite about it so how is that not being Christ-like? Advertisements. When this channel finally does become eligible to be monetized, we do not, and I should change that to we, do not have control of the advertisements. As I have watched some of the videos from David Wood, there were, although David Wood speaks against Islam, there were some advertisements about the new mosque being built in New York City. Okay, well, that is the same thing. David Wood does not have control of the advertisements that pop up, and neither do we. Just keep that in mind. Be forewarned. Your replies to any of these videos at which I am now finally getting to, something that I said earlier, but let me get to later. Your replies to any of these videos, either by written or by a, a rebuttal YouTube video or any other way, is probable to be on an upcoming video. So, if you don't want to be on a next video, be very careful at what you comment or or reply with, and this is legal. Pretend we are from the state of Missouri, you know, the show me state. If you intend on refuting what we say that your Quran or Hadith is saying, you better have proof of it. Again, we are the 1%. If you give us a verse that says this right here refutes it, I am going to do two things, for sure. I am going to look at the verse. Then I am going to look to see if the verse I quoted happened while, while, while Muhammad was in Mecca or when he was chased out of Mecca and had to go to Medina. I will take a look at when that chapter and or a verse was written in correlation to the Mohammedan timeline. Freedom of speech. The apostate prophet said that freedom of speech is we have the right to mock Muhammad. It doesn't mean that you have to agree it is a good thing. It also does not mean you cannot be offended. 
It also does not mean that you have the right to commit physical violence against us. You have the right to insult our God, and that should be termed as our God. Okay, because if at all we are then Muhammad, if we are then mocking Muhammad, we are not mocking you. So, if we can and have the right to mock Muhammad and Allah, you have the right to do the same thing, to mock Yeshua and Theos. We have the right not to like our God being insulted, but that is part of freedom of speech. We have the right to turn away and ignore. We don't have the right to take your freedoms away from you within the law, IEC number four. We don't have to listen to you either. You have the right to take your thoughts somewhere else and call and then call Jesus and our God names. We don't have to give you a platform to insult us. Now that will stay. But we add, okay, these first 11 is what the, <coughs> the apostate prophet said. Now we are adding, you do not have the right to restrict our freedom of religion as we do not restrict yours. I will also add we have the right to ban you from our channel. And this can be for any reason, but we will keep to within honorable rules, okay? Like if you make more than five comments on a single, on that of a single video, Get your own channel and then do it over there. You are trying to take over my or our channel and it will not be tolerated. If you use cuss words, if you threaten us with physical violence. Things like that will get you banned off of this channel. Just because you are then mocking Jesus and our God will not get you banned, but the but that of the other things will but some of the other things, like I have mentioned, will. So, keep it clean. And keep it on topic. That's going to be the biggest thing that might get you kicked off 
of our channel is if you constantly try to change the topic. Don't do that. Keep with the topic. You may not like it, but you have to give a reply. Well, I guess you don't have to, but it would be a good idea if you try to address that issue. Now, some Muslims might be really mad in just a few seconds. But before you get mad, let me finish. This freedom of speech in includes things like this. Charlie Hebdo done several of these. Okay? And there are others in which that other people have drawn, but these are mocking Muhammad. If he did not want to be mocked, he should not have thrusted himself in the limelight. Because once you are in the limelight, you are likely going to be insulted. Now, on the reverse side of the coin, this is why I said don't get mad yet. We as Christians have seen things like this. These are an insult to us. And yet you don't see us storming the newspaper we're at, uh, Charlie Hebdo used to work at. He have passed away just a couple of weeks ago now. But you do not see us Christians charging the newspaper headquarters where he used to work at and do damage and kill people. You don't see that. We don't like these things either. But this falls under freedom of speech. So does this. So, get used to it. It falls under freedom of speech. Let's see, did I put some? Nope, okay. So, let's be fair. We will be picking on the Christians too, for we are seeking the truth. In the Bible it states, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. This is in the Old Testament. This, this is clearly have been abrogated. So let me use that word here for the first time on behalf of the Christians, okay? In the Quran, it although basically states the same thing. So, if I was a Jew, I could not say anything about that. Because in the Quran, it states practically the same thing. To kill the homosexual. But we, as a Christian New Testament, will bring people to Christ and let Christ work with them on their homosexuality. For in Revelation chapter 22, it tells us that one, well, one of the groups of people that will not get into heaven are the homosexuals. That is what it states. 
in Revelation chapter 22. That isn't me saying nothing about it. That's what what the Bible says. At which technically that of the Quran says the same thing. Okay. But here is the biggest difference. The homosexuals in Christianity is being given the opportunity to repent and turn away from that sin. When I talk to other Christians and they say bad things about the homosexuals, I ask them one simple question. And what is your sin that you are hiding? Okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Anderson, that of a uh, YouTube a Baptist preacher talks really bad to the homosexuals. He says that they should just kill themselves. What? Now, now they're talking about not being Christ-like. That is not Christ-like. Because even that of uh, sinners, while he was walking the earth in the first century A.D., people was able to repent of their sins and turn away from them. They had the opportunity. But uh, Anderson, and I can't think of his first name right now, Anderson was saying that they should just kill themselves. And that is not the way to win people to Christ. That is inciting mob violence. And we don't do that. We call you to come to Christ, the one true Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. One of... One of... One of the names of Allah is Al-Haq. And, oops, didn't I just say Al-Haq? It the way, the truth, and the light, or the life, sorry, the life, no one comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Okay? Oops. Let's see, did I go out of place? Yeah. Okay. So, let's just be fair. Both that of the Old Testament and also the Quran does say to kill the homosexuals. In the New Testament, we are called to bring them to Christ and let and let Christ. Well, deal with their sin. Okay? Jesus said in John, uh, Jesus said that for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Again, if you tend to condemn Homosexual, oh, uh, homosexuality so bad that you say that they should just kill themselves? 
I need to ask you, what is your sin? Okay, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Think about that. Islam versus Christianity. There are two main parts to Islam. There are others, but there is Sunni and there, there is Shia. Here are the main differences. Okay. And there are two main sects of Christianity. Catholic and that of the Protestant, and within that of the Protestant, there is a lot of other denominations. Baptist, Church of Christ, that of the United Methodist Church, Life Church, uh, and the list goes on for quite some time. Okay. Um, a few others. It is that of Mormonism. Uh, it is of 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 but if it is supposed to be the real name of God, it isn't Jehovah, it is Jehovah. Oops. They are doing a serious mispronunciation of his name. Jehovah. Okay, this guy, and I'm not going to try to say his name here, but Yusuf Al uh, said, if it weren't for the penalty of apostasy, there would be no, and maybe I should capitalize that, no Islam. See, that is why in Islamic-controlled countries, a, apostasy laws are carried out, which means that you have three days to then return to Islam or you will be put to death. In Islamic-controlled Sharia law countries, in non-Islamic controlled Sharia law countries like the United States, England, and other places, you have more freedom, but that doesn't mean that the death threat still doesn't happen. The apostate prophet does not live in a Islamic controlled country, but he, but he gets death threats all the time because he left Islam. There is even a warrant out for his arrest in a Sharia law controlled country that if he ever goes there, he will be immediately arrested. That warrant is only good within that particular country, and I do not remember what country he said it was. But he has said in one of his videos that there is a warrant out for his arrest because he mocks Muhammad. Another thing, Yusuf... Uh, Al Q said, and I'm just going to say Q. 
The truth stands on its own, but a lie needs more lies to stand. And that's why Islam has a little thing called takia. And I'm not talking about a drink either. We will talk about that here in just a few seconds. He also said that there is an avalanche of apostasy because the young people does not believe in Allah anymore or the alleged final prophet, Muhammad. Well, so many things doesn't make sense in the Quran. Muhammad Hijab also said, and let me see if there's something. No, it is this. That he tries to say that the share of Americans who leave Islam is offset by those who become a Muslim. Well, if that's the case, then why is it that Islam used to be 1.8 billion and now it's at 1.6 billion? That means over 200 million has left Islam. That is not an offset. Now, is it? This is an example of Takiya. And what is Takiya? Thank you for asking. Takiya is lying and deception in Islam. You can look it up. Okay. And this guy, uh, this guy says, we smile in the face of some people, although our hearts curse them. The Quran tells you to do the same thing now, now that it does it, which makes it a little hard to know if you're telling the truth or not. That is why we will be researching what you try to tell us. We don't know. Think about that. Although our hearts curse them, if we are showing you the truth, why are you mad at us? Shouldn't you be mad at the ones that has been lying to you instead? Think about that. In the end, if your prophet and God cannot withstand criticism, I should ask, and the Quran, or holy books, if your prophet, Quran, holy books, and your God cannot withstand criticism, ridicule, historical investigation, critiquing of the holy books, questions, funny cartoons being called idiots and other names. If your God commands you to defend him and his prophet's honor, isn't it time to find a new God? Again, what did I say about the term God? It is a title and not a name. So, isn't it time to find a new God? After all, if your God cannot handle these things on him or her own, and you must defend for him or her, or them, 
they are not that much of a god, are they? Not that much of a god. And there is where the problem is. Your God wants you to die for Him. Our God sent His only begotten Son to die for us to pay for the penalty of sin. So, for the ones that, that accepts that gift, can go to heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says that we are saved by grace through faith not of any works lest we boast. See, our salvation is not based on what we have done, but what Jesus has done for us. Then in verse 10 it tells us that then we are called to do good works. Okay, we are saved whether if we do good works or not. The more good works you do, the better the reward in heaven. But we are saved, whereas in Islam, you have to constantly do good works, and even then, you don't know, because in one of the Hadiths, Sahiya, for sure, and I think it is also in the Quran, at which I will be talking about this in a later video. It states that even Muhammad was not sure of his salvation. If your own prophet was not sure of his own salvation, And he was the prophet. How can you be assured of your salvation? One sure way to be assured is to come to Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Be baptized. Repent of your sins. And be saved. Come to Jesus, and you can be assured of your salvation. Whereas Islam, you are not so sure of your salvation. Why take that chance? Especially after we get through proving how wrong Islam is. Think about that. And, I mean, seriously think about coming to Jesus. For he said he was the only way to the Father. No one else can come to the Father except through him. Just like it was back in the first century A.D., so it is still today. Nowhere do we find Jesus saying, and my mother is a co-mediator. Nowhere in the scripture. Nor does it say that there will be a time that Mary will be a co-mediator. That is a Catholic belief not a Protestant belief. 
Mary cannot be a co-mediator because if she became a co-mediator, that would mean that she is omnipresent. To hear all of the little over one million Catholics praying to her all the time, praying the Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. See, I used to be Catholic. I know that prayer quite well. I used to pray the rosary at least once a day. Sometimes more than once but at least once a day. And then I got a divorce and I went through a crisis of faith as what Yasser Qadi would say, a crisis of faith. And shortly after, I became that of a, a Protestant Christian again, because I was that of a Protestant Christian, became Catholic, and have returned as a Protestant Christian. And I think God allowed that to happen so I can talk to the brothers and sisters in the Catholic faith because it because it is easier for someone like me who has been there to talk to a Catholic but I don't want to join being that of a, a Muslim just so that I can talk to the talk to them because I am looking from the outside in, and it doesn't look good, especially what happened to Hatun Tosh just a couple of days ago at the Speaker's Corner. That is despicable, and he needs to spend a few years in jail for attempted murder. And again, people may say that that isn't Christ-like. Um, let me ask you this, and I have asked my roommate this a few months ago, or I have pointed this out to my roommate a few months ago whenever he was talking about that of the hardships he is having to go through. When Jesus was on the cross and the thief on the cross said, Remember me when you go into your kingdom. Jesus forgave him of his sins. Now, think about this. Did the thief on the cross automatically get down off the cross and have walked away? No, he still had to pay the earthly penalty for the sin he committed, at which it was theft, but his spirit, soul, his soul was forgiven so he could go to heaven. Think about that. On the cross, that thief didn't come down when Jesus forgave him.
even though Hatun, that of the person that she is, will then probably hold no grudges against him, she still cannot say that she chooses not to file charges because that is attempted murder and that is a capital punishment. That is a serious crime. Hatun, the that of the uh, lioness for our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord continue to be with her. She and the rest of us don't do this because we hate you. We do these because we want to see you saved the right way, and the only right way is through Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Please consider what we do as a friend that is having to tell you the hard truth. Something that you don't like, but it is the truth, and will the truth will oftentimes set you free. In this case, however, it depends on how stubborn you are. It may or may not set you free, because if you are as stubborn as uh, as stubborn as a uh, as that of a Muhammad hijab, you will probably never become a Christian. <coughs> Excuse me. But I hope you are not that stubborn. For Christ is truly the only way, the truth, and the life. The life. What are you waiting for? Come to Christ now. The the great tribulation is at hand. Thank you, and have a great day.